Thank you for being a part of this study in John's Gospel. And tonight, Daniel Ricketts is going to talk about this at 7 o'clock on the Maywood Facebook page. We're all still hanging in there, staying together during this coronavirus pandemic. And the passage that we're going to study today is a particularly interesting one because I think it gives us instructions about what we are supposed to be doing doing during this pandemic. So we're going to get started. Uh, John 14, verse 7, Jesus said, If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip responded and said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. So that's a great passage of scripture to talk about, and it begins with one of the disciples misunderstanding Jesus, and his misunderstanding helps people like us understand. So Philip was confused. In verse 8, he said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Now, G Philip had already heard Jesus speak seven I am statements where Jesus put himself on the same level as God. Uh, he had seen miracles. He had heard Jesus teach. He had been with Jesus for three years, but he was still wondering who Jesus really was. And Jesus responded by saying, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever seen me has seen the Father. That's verse 9. So Jesus' role is clear to us because we have the 2020 vision of hindsight. When we see and hear Jesus, we see and hear the Father. Through Jesus, the Father has been with the disciples, as Jesus put it, all this time. They just didn't know it. Now, through the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son are with us. Don't miss this amazing gift from God to us. Everything Jesus was to his disciples, the Holy Spirit is to us today. The old hymn which says, and he walks with me and he talks with me, and he tells me that I'm his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known, he is true this him in the garden is true for us because through the Holy Spirit Jesus really does walk with us he really does talk with us he lets us know that we belong to him and we know that deep in our heart verse 12 is a really interesting verse and it's certainly worthy of our serious consideration let's read it Jesus said very truly I tell you the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. Now, people have puzzled over this statement for centuries. Jesus healed the sick, set people free from evil and demons, and brought them into a relationship with the Father. Is he saying that we can do this kind of work too? And what about the phrase, greater works, Jesus said we would do? Can anyone do anything greater than what Jesus has done? Well, here's an answer to those questions. To do what Jesus did, we have to do what Jesus did. Now that's not some sort of double talk, it's really a profound truth. What did Jesus do? Well, take a look at verse 10. Jesus said, The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. This is a common refrain throughout all of John's gospel. 
Jesus said over and over again he didn't do anything separate from the Father's will and direction. John 5:19. I've referenced many times. Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. That's what Jesus did. So if we're going to do Jesus' works, then we'll have to do what Jesus did. Okay? So we have to determine in our lives to live in such a close relationship with the Lord that we always look to the Father for direction in every aspect of life. Think with me for a minute. Jesus lived the greatest life possible. He was without a doubt the wisest person to walk the earth. Besides that, he had the best personality, the most joyful life, and lots of other things. How did that happen? Because he lived in complete alignment with the Father's will. Well, if we live the way Jesus lived his life, we will find that knowing and doing God's will is not stifling, Rather, it is truly the key to the abundant life. There's one more really important passage for us to consider, and the heading for this I've placed is praying the Jesus kind of prayer. So if we're going to do what Jesus did, then we also must do what Jesus did in prayer. And verses 13 and 14 begin a series of prayer promises from Jesus that actually continue through the next couple of chapters. Here's what he said in verses 13 and 14. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Wow. So what is it to pray in Jesus' name? Well, to pray in Jesus' name is to pray according to the nature and character of Jesus. Gospel of John makes it abundantly clear that Jesus always looked to the Father for what he did. Well, if we are to pray in Jesus' name, we'll do the same thing. We will make sure that our prayers are in alignment with the Father's character and what he has revealed in his will. Uh, Prayer is one very central way that ordinary people like us can do the works that Jesus has given us to do. Praying in Jesus' name looks like this. And I'm going to try to make this as clear as possible because I believe that your prayers are greatly needed at this time in our world's history. So, number one, to pray in Jesus' name, we immerse ourselves in the character of Jesus by prayer, worship, fellowship, and Bible reading. Living with Jesus is a transformational friendship. In a friendship relationship, Jesus transforms our nature and our character to be more like his. That's one. Number two, remember everything Jesus was to his disciples, the Holy Spirit is to us today. We ask the Holy Spirit to direct our Bible reading and to reveal to us what are God's plans for the times we're living in. I very frequently begin my prayer time, Holy Spirit, please teach me how to pray. Please show me what you want me to know. Please pray through me. Try that out, please. Number three, influenced by the character of Jesus and led by the Spirit, we bring before the Father the requests that we believe are within the will of God. We trust God to answer these prayers because they are prayed in Jesus' name. That is, according to his character and his will. Let me state again. I believe with all my heart that the two themes of this article are very important for people who are listening to me or reading this on real-voices.com for the times in which we're living. The story I'm getting ready to tell you has inspired my praying for quite some time, and I hope it encourages you to do what today's article teaches. So we're during the height of World War II, and there's a band of some of the most influential Christian leaders that I've ever read about. And these people joined together to be a uh, prayer force on behalf of God. And they set up some standards for themselves that they believe to be a part of God's plan. So let me list out the standards. These who's who of religious leaders agreed to only travel by public transportation and they paid all of their own expenses. There were times 
when they found themselves sleeping on the floor between the seats of a train because that was the only place they could find passage to their destination. They traveled a route from north to south, then east to west, making a cross on the map of the country. When they would get to their location, they would spend maybe five or more days just getting their hearts ready. They sought to align their hearts and their minds with the will of God. Now think with me for a moment. These are great leaders. They are paying their own way. They are taking public transportation. They are praying the will of God, but they are waiting on God to make sure they know both his character and his purpose for what they are doing. And so they didn't release their, their prayer until they had that settled. How important that is for us to hear. Then when they were ready to release their prayer on behalf of the world, they joined together in a Holy Spirit empowered effort. On one occasion, I think they were in Colorado on top of a mountain, uh, one of the leaders felt the power of God's love being poured through him to the world in a way that was more powerful than he'd ever felt in his life happens to be on this particular night of their prayer journey, a crucial battle took place that literally changed the direction of World War II. I tell you this story because I believe ordinary people around the world can be used just like these leaders. Uh, Jesus has told us that we can do the works that he did. He has given us his prayer promises. It is now up to us to obey him and to see the results that he desires. Why don't you pray with me, please? Dear God, thank you for the truth of this Bible passage today. And I pray that you help us, your church, all around the world, to live up to the glorious promises of this passage. May we do the works of Jesus today because we do what Jesus did in his life. Please teach us how to pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of this. A little longer today than normal. I hope you stayed with me, and I hope especially that you're praying. Look forward to hearing what Daniel has to say tonight on the Maywood Facebook page at 7 o'clock. God bless you.